Hi everybody, this video is on the topic of getting your dog comfortable having their teeth brushed. There are many different ways to brush your dog's teeth. Here are some examples that will be covered later in this video. A big thank you to my friend Marcelo Ekman for supplying this footage as well as ideas for brushing your dog's teeth. Marcelo is a veterinarian and dog trainer from the business Toro de Cao in Brazil. They make amazing dog training tutorials in Portuguese. You can find out more in the description below. All dogs are different, so you can experiment with which technique your dog is most comfortable with. Good. Now, it's important to understand that if your dog has never had their teeth brushed before and there's a lot of buildup and the gums are inflamed, it's important to go to the vet first to see if it's okay to brush your dog's teeth because if, they're, if there's a lot of plaque, what you can do is by mistake brush uh, the bacteria into the gums. So you wanna make sure to go to the vet and they might need to have a dental and maybe even teeth extracted first before you begin this, uh, the actual tooth brushing process. But in the time of scheduling the vet appointment, uh, you can do a lot of training where the toothbrush isn't actually gonna be going in your dog's mouth and you can do handling and getting your dog comfortable so that when you do get to the point where you can brush your dog's teeth, uh, you've already worked on steps that are gonna make them more comfortable with the process. Also, if you have a dog that you're not sure uh, how they might react if you touch their face or go in their mouth, you wanna get help from a professional trainer that uses positive reinforcement to help you with this in case you uh, get into a situation where you can't read your dog's body language and they might wanna bite you, for example. So it's better to get professional help. Okay, so are you ready? So the first step is getting the dog comfortable with the brushes and the toothpaste. So instead of uh, your dog sitting in front of you, instead of po putting the object into your dog's face, you're gonna play a keep away game with the brushes and the toothpaste. So you move them away from the dog and that's gonna encourage the dog to have interest in them and move towards them. You can also put them down on the floor away from the dog rather than put them into the dog's space. And that's gonna encourage the dog to go and sniff them. Good, and then you can mark and reinforce your dog for investigating the toothbrushes and the toothpaste. Good. Now, I have this toothpaste here and I don't do any sorts of sponsorships of products in my video. It just happens to be the toothpaste that I got from the dog dentist that I go to and it's called Pet Smile. Um, I, again, say that I don't uh, sponsor products, it's just the one that I happen to use, and it actually is one that uh, my dogs like the taste of. So you can just let the dog lick it, and maybe if you're not a, a ger I mean, if you're a germaphobe, you're not gonna let them lick it out of the container. You could have them lick it off your finger, um, or off of a, a, a dish, or off of the toothbrush but you could begin by just having them lick the, tree, uh, the toothpaste off your finger and just a tiny bit like that. Good job to get them used to the taste. Awesome. Some dogs don't like the taste of specific toothpastes and you can try different types um, to see what they might be interested in. I've actually used a toothpaste that my dogs haven't liked and of course it makes the process longer uh, with the conditioning of getting them to like having their teeth brushed. So I, I like that all my dogs like this specific tooth, toothpaste. Okay, now I've put some toothpaste onto my Chihuahua's tiny little toothbrush. Those other toothbrushes are for my other dogs and I'm gonna let her lick the toothpaste off of the brush and move the brush away from her so that she keeps getting interested in moving towards the brush like that. I'm not putting the brush into her face like that. I'm moving it away at first to get her really motivated to wanna go lick the toothbrush. Good. And then I can mark and reinforce her with a treat for going and licking the toothbrush. Good. Yay, that was awesome. The next steps are gonna be much easier if you've already worked on handling and grooming with your dog. I have a video in the description below on how to begin this training of teaching your dog to be comfortable with your hands reaching and touching your dog. So uh, you can check out that video. I also have a video on how to teach the chin rest 
where your dog rests their chin in your hand, which can be extremely helpful for this exercise. Some other trainers like Laura Monaco Torelli teach a chin rest where the dog rests their chin on a surface or the hand, and then they can brush the teeth while the dog's resting their chin uh, on, on the surface. That can be helpful, uh, especially if you need to scrape your dog's teeth and you need some leverage uh, while the dog's jaws are closed. Um, but to begin with, what I'm doing here is I'm just feeding the dog a treat as I reach under the dog's chin like that. And then the next step would be being able to reach under the chin and the dog's very comfortable with it like that. Um, so you can check out the chin rest video. But what we're gonna use that exercise for in this video is that you're gonna feed the dog as you reach for their face like this. So uh, I'm holding the treat in my right hand and I'm reaching under the dog's chin like this with my left hand. So it might take a couple of training sessions for your dog to just even be comfortable with that. Uh, you might find that your dog backs away when you touch their face. You can also practice reaching over the head like this. So first by feeding a treat and then by touching and then feeding the treat. So I have multiple treats in here and they're super tiny for my tiny chihuahua. Um, and I'm reaching and touching like that, good. And then I'm delaying giving the treat. So I'm reaching, good, and then giving the treat. And when I go from above, I'm lifting the treat up. So she's pushing her head into my hand like that. And when I come from below, the treat is coming from below like this. So she's pushing into my hand um, in anticipation of the treat. And that's gonna make her more confident with the touch because naturally some dogs, if you reach for them, they'll duck away. And that's gonna not be helpful if you say you have to open their mouth to look at their teeth. So another thing you can practice is feeding and you're just touching the sides of your dog's mouth uh, as the beginning step to lifting the lip up like that. And just uh, moving around the mouth because the toothbrush, when it's going in there, it's gonna be touching those areas. Another thing you can do is as you feed the treat, you're just going to touch around on the teeth underneath the lips like this with your fingers. Good job, good job. So first I'm feeding and touching her face like this to simulate brushing and messing with her teeth, but uh, over the skin like this. And then I'm going to touch and then feed. So she's looking up at the treat and expecting it to come into her mouth. And that's keeping her interested in me touching her face like that. If I were to just try from the beginning to try and free shape it and touch her face, um, some dogs it might be a little bit more tricky and they would back away. But you're welcome to do that. This I just find keeps them more confident uh, with clients and less likely to have a setback if they suddenly decide that it feels terrible. So I'm holding the treat up here, marking good, and then going to feed the treat. Good, awesome. You can't do this with little dogs because their mouths are too small, but here you can see I've inserted my thumb into Wish's mouth and I'm rubbing her teeth Good. and gums before I mark and reinforce her with a treat. Good. Here I'm throwing a treat away from Good. me Good. to see if Wish wants to reapproach to continue Good. the training. Sometimes dogs will tell you that they're done with the training Good. and Go walk away it. after eating the treat or stay back Good. away from you. This it. is information that you need to drastically reduce criteria Good. or give Good. the dog a break. If your dog pulls away from you or takes a step away, it's just information that you need to take the steps slower and smaller. So if I go too long with uh, moving my finger around and splash his mouth, she lifts her head up like that. So what I can do is make it easier on the next trial. So I might just ask for a chin rest. Good, and then feed a treat, throw a treat away, and then have the treat right here, ask for a little bit less, and then woo, throw another treat, good job. And then just a chin rest, chin rest. Now that might take quite a few training sessions depending on your dog. It, don't be uh, disheartened if your dog is very uncomfortable with this. The training does take time. So if you find that your dog is uncomfortable with this sort of training, you can uh, just try and do at least 10 to 12 sessions and then start to look for results to your training. Okay, so the next step is feeding a treat and holding the toothbrush out. So 
I'm moving into the dog's space now with the toothbrush. I could warm up by having the dog sniff the toothbrush and follow the toothbrush um, if you begin the training session like this. But I am feeding and the toothbrush is moving into the dog's space but not touching the dog like this. And then I can practice switching hands. So my treats are in my left hand. And this is hard if you're uh, you know, left or right-handed and the other hand doesn't work as well. So um, I'm feeding and <laughs> I'm left-handed, so this is harder for me. And the toothbrush is approaching from the other side like this. Now the reason I'm feeding and moving the brush is I'm getting the dog used to the brush coming into their space while they're getting the treat. Because if I were to just move the brush into some dog's spa uh, face, facial space, they're gonna back away from it. And then it's really hard to condition it to be a positive event. One thing you can try, and it really depends on the dog, if they can nibble at a larger treat or a soft treat, you can work on this. But if you have a dog that just can't nibble, they just wanna swallow the treat, it's not gonna work so well. But for Epic here, it's a great uh, technique. She's nibbling on that treat and I can get the brush into her mouth so she can feel what the brush is like. And you can see that she's not backing away or having a negative response to the brush going near her front teeth like that. So I'm just getting a little brush in as I'm feeding the treat. And you're not really cleaning any plaque at the moment, you're just getting them used to uh, what it feels like to have that brush moving around near their, near their face and on their, in their mouth at the front. It's gonna be more invasive when the brush goes further back into their mouth. So um, I can give her a treat back here and see if she wants to approach again to get the treat. If you see your dog doesn't want to come back for the treat, then you can see that uh, it's not worth it to them and you can try different treats and also slow down how fast you're going with teaching them to be comfortable with the equipment. Now I'm gonna practice moving towards her with the brush with no treats in my hand. And if you have a dog that can't nibble at a treat, you would move on to this step and then you're moving with your hand as if to do the chin rest and the brush is coming towards the dog like that. Good. So you might not even reach the dog and mark and reinforce like that. Good. And I'm not using a clicker for this behavior because I'm using both of my hands. Here you can see I lift the lip and I brush some of the teeth, then I mark and throw the treat. Every time that you raise criteria, say you brush a new part of the dog's mouth or you do it for a longer duration, you can go back a step and as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm asking for things that are very simple, like a chin rest, or simply coming towards me, or letting me touch the top of her mouth before marking and then throwing another treat. Go get it. Good. Go get it. Good. Go get it. Go get it. Good. Go get it. Good. Good. Here, Marcelo has taught the dog to target the side of their muzzle to his hand so he can get good access and leverage when using the toothbrush to clean the dog's teeth. You could use free shaping to train this behavior or luring in the same way we did with the chin rest where you're holding a treat out in front of your dog and you're luring their head so that it bumps into your hand and mark that moment that the dog's head touches your hand and then feed. Then move your hand without a treat in it and finally see if the dog will offer touching your hand in order to gain the treat after multiple repetitions when the dog has figured out the game. You can also teach the dog to touch your hand from below using the same method in which you could then lift the lips to examine the teeth. Here, Marcelo is having the dog relax in his lap upside down while he cleans the dog's teeth. You can train this by training each behavior separately, such as teaching the dog to be comfortable with the toothbrush and brushing his teeth while the dog is in front of you, so it's easy to see if the dog backs away or shies away from the brush, and training the dog to relax on his back first for doing calm massage and handling, and then other things such as the beginning of toothbrushing, or perhaps you might wanna trim your dog's nails upside down like this, like I do. I've never actually brushed my dog's teeth upside down, and when I tried out this technique, it worked great 
for my little Chihuahua Epic. I have a video tutorial that I've linked in the description below on how to teach your dog to be comfortable laying in your lap for handling and grooming. I find that a lot of dogs are more comfortable with handling and grooming when they're warm and relaxed, so I suggest trying these exercises when it's a nice, warm, sunny day and they've just been sunbathing, or you could have your dog on a heated blanket or under a warm lamp. Instead of the upside down settle, you could train your dog just to lay on their side with their head down as if playing dead, and then you can work on their teeth from that angle. Some dogs, especially those that don't have a lot of hair, might prefer to lay on a dog bed or a couch or a blanket to do this. You can use an extremely soft or small brush with your little dog or if you have a sensitive dog, or you can begin by using a Q-tip to rub on your dog's teeth to get them used to having their teeth brushed at first. Some dogs might find this technique more comfortable, where the brush approaches from behind rather than from in front of the dog. You can use your thumb to lift the lip to get the toothbrush in, or you can teach your dog to take the toothbrush in their mouth. A simple way to train this is to hold a low-value chew out to your dog and mark the moment your dog takes the chew in his mouth. You can then add a verbal cue such as take it, mark, and then reinforce with a high-value treat. Once your dog has learned the new cue, take it or open up, you can then offer your dog the toothbrush and mark and reinforce your dog for opening his mouth. Open up. Good. This is a two-sided toothbrush and it can take dogs some time to get used to. It goes on both sides of the teeth and it's great for dogs that don't like it when you have the toothbrush on the inside of their mouth. Take it. Good. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later.